All right, y'all. So at the beginning of your assignment, you're asked, what is forensic science? Again, I just wanted to know what you thought forensic science was. What have you learned about it? And so we're going to break it down. What is forensic science? Well, forensic science is the application of science. Remember, it is in the actual word, right? We're applying, we're, ap we're applying, excuse me, science to laws during criminal investigation, as previously mentioned, as governed by the legal standards of acceptable evidence while following criminal procedure. So that's a lot of words, right? That's a lot going on right there. But again, just think of it as science, using it with law, and you're trying to find evidence, right? What is evidence? Don't worry about it. That's gonna be covered later. I like to break down forensic science into three settings where it can occur. It can happen in the crime scene, right? Boom, a crime occurs, murder occurs, an accident occurs. Guess what? People have to show up and actually collect what we call evidence. Things and procedures need to be followed in order to, um, in order to try to solve the crime, in order to try to figure out what happened, right? Even if it wasn't a murder, we still want to know what happened. Uh, the second place, and this is where I feel like a, uh, the, not the majority, but a lot of the science happens, is in the lab, right? You've most likely taken some type of science at this point. You may have done some experiments. You may have done a couple labs. Well, the labs come to play a lot in this case as well, right? This is where we use chemicals to try to find, well, was there poison involved? Well, was there bullets involved? You know, if there was bullets involved, can we tell something from the bullets? Later on, you may have heard of the word fingerprints. Well, guess what? We'll be talking specifically about these bad boys and bad girls um, of our fingerprints. The last setting, the third setting is the courtroom. Remember, a lot of this science is used in the courtroom. It's trying to prosecute people, right? Is it doing it justly? Does that mean, and basically that's asking, is it doing it fairly? Has it been worked and has it been used fairly in history? We'll be talking about that too. Again, forensic science, it ties into a whole lot of different aspects. It ties into science as expected, it can also tie into politics. It can also tie into history. So we're going to try to tie and weave all these things together. We're going to watch this quick video of what a forensic scientist's career even looks like. Books and TV programs make the work of forensic science technicians seem fast-paced and exciting. In real life, however, their job is more likely to be as slow and painstaking as it is important. Forensic science technicians work at the scene of a crime and in laboratories. They perform tests on weapons or or they examine substances such as fiber, hair, and tissue to determine a connection to the crime and to a suspect. Some forensic science technicians specialize in particular areas such as fingerprinting, DNA and handwriting analysis, biochemistry, or ballistics. They prepare reports to document their findings and the laboratory techniques used. While much of their expertise and deductive abilities come from experience, forensic science technicians are usually college graduates, having taken courses in subjects ranging from criminology to biology. Forensic science technicians are a crucial part of our legal system. They might be called upon to testify as expert witnesses. Their evidence and testimony can help send the guilty to prison or clear the innocent. All right, y'all, like the video is showing, again, it's these three settings, right, that we just talked about. They all come into play. They all play a role into what is the criminal justice system, into what is forensic science. So a quick timeline is forensic science. On January 1st, 1250, imagine how long ago that was, 1250, King Richard 
excuse me, invented the idea of using the coroner to investigate questionable deaths. So a coroner is basically somebody that looks at a body, you know, somebody dies and they're saying they want to find out what the cause of death is. You know, back before 1250, guess what? Somebody died. You just figured, well, they're dead, right? Who knows? Who knows, right? They, they just died. Well, King Richard was one of the first people um, that basically said, you know what? We should look at certain things. If somebody has a couple stab wounds in them. If somebody, um, you know, somebody seemed like they got poison. Well, we should look into those things. On January 1st, 1784, well, guess what? First evidence was used, first physical evidence, excuse me, was used in criminal court cases. Meaning that it wasn't just he said, she said, right? Usually evidence was just somebody saying something. Well, now they were able to use actual, whether it was hair, whether it was, um, uh, what else? Whether it was hair, whether it was like some other sort of actual evidence, actual piece of material. In 1880, fingerprints are unique. We find out that these things we'll learn later are very unique. And Mr. Henry Folds and William James Herschel published a paper about our own fingerprints. Another scientist uses his discovery to help the court. His system identifies different patterns in the fingerprints. Again, we'll talk about those later. And in 1892, the first time fingerprints are used in a murder investigation is with an Argentinian police officer. So y'all, this is just a basic timeline. This is just a basic overview of what you can do, of what's happened in forensic science and what you can do. Uh, you can be working in a lab. You can be somebody that uh, goes into a criminal, as the video is t talking about, you can be somebody that goes to a crime scene and starts investigating it, maybe starts taking photos, maybe starts collecting some of the evidence, some of the things that were left there. Um, you can also study a specific type of thing. Maybe if you want to deal with the bullets or you want to deal with poison, handwriting, you can study handwriting. You Nowadays, especially computers, there's a bunch of forensic, computer forensic scientists that kind of try to trace, you know, whether, if you ever heard of the group Anonymous, things of that nature. You try to trace like, well, is somebody using the internet or their computers for bad things, you know? So there's people that actually go after, um, um, I guess, criminals that basically handle computers. All right, y'all. That is it to for today. It's just a quick overview. Next week, we'll try to see what effect does um, TV have on forensic science.